We're into a new section now, and in this section we're going to be extending our knowledge of effects. I'll quickly explain what we've got. I've got two video tracks here, with a clip on each. We've not got their embedded audio, I've deleted those. We don't really need them for what I'm about to show you. Well, as you can see, on video track 1, we've got that clip, numbered as 70, with video clip 67 on video track 2. Now, in terms of visibility, whatever is on the top track, in this case number 67, well, that completely obscures whatever is below on video track 1. Certainly set like this with the opacity set to 100%. So visibility then, as we can see, works by top down, similar to way as we were talking about playing cards previously. If we have a king of clubs on top of an ace of spades, then it's the king of clubs that we can see, even though the ace of spades might be a better card. If you want to reverse these tracks, well of course you can do. For example, with number 70 on video track 1, if I left click it, and I'll just move it out of the way a little bit, which means I can drag number 67 from video track 2 down onto video track 1, and consequently replace what was on video track 2 with clip number 70. Which means, of course, clip number 70 is what we see. It takes precedence over what's below it. OK, now I'm just going to reverse that. I'll go back to where we were. I'll shuffle these out of the way and replace. OK, done. We're now back to where we were with clip 67 on video track 2. Consequently, that's why we can see that clip in our program monitor above. OK, now for the rest of this tutorial, I want to talk about effects, video effects and how we can easily find effects when we want to apply them to any clip of our choice, and then subsequently change back to where we were if that's what we decide to do. Now what I could be doing is coming over to the effects panel and digging through the video effects category, looking for a specific effect that I want to use. Perhaps I want to use a black and white filter and place it on one of my clips. Well, unless I know exactly where it is, it can be a little bit tiresome searching around for the particular effect that you want to use. So, instead of doing that, I'm going to use this search field just above. As soon as I start to type in the effect that I'm looking for, i.e. black and white, well in this case I only have to get as far as BLA before I can now see automatically open up within our video effects the relevant folder image control and within there I can see black and white. Noticing also just below, because BLA is the beginning of black, we also see any other filters that contain the word black. So in video transitions below that, and then in dissolve, we see dip to black. Anyway, regardless, we want the black and white filter, so I'll left click on it and drag and drop onto my top clip on video track 2. And as a result, as we would expect, in the program monitor now, we see this clip on video track 2 taking on this black and white look. And I actually quite like it, to be honest. I like that monochromatic look. It makes it quite moody. And in actual fact, this scene was filmed in the summertime, or thereabouts anyway. But that view now, with the monochrome look, reminds me of what it's like in the winter. Anyway, I want to extend our knowledge of filters now by talking about a reset button that we can use with pretty much any filter. However, with some, it doesn't work. I'm going to give you an example with this black and white filter. First of all, I need to make sure my clip is selected on video track 2. And then I'll open up my effect controls panel. And there you'll see below our motion and opacity and time remapping filters that are always there. We now see any filters that we've added in. In this case, we've added in this black and white filter. Well, imagine I wanted to see what this looked like prior to imposing this monochromatic filter. Well, you would imagine I would be able to come over here. You'll see this on every effect. Well, pretty much anyway. You can see it on motion and opacity above. This is the reset effect button. If you click it, you would imagine we would revert back to the full colour version of this clip. But as you can see, no matter how many times I click it, frustratingly, we don't revert back. And that's with this black and white filter. Other filters work exactly as you want them to. So you might be asking, isn't there anything we can do about this so that we can see what it looks like prior to trying this effect? Well, there is. In fact, there are a couple of things that we can do. And I'm going to try and show you both of these in this tutorial. If I don't manage it in the available time for this tutorial, we'll pick up again in the following tutorial, where we will have seen both solutions by then. One solution is to come over here to where it says Effects. FX, just to the left of black and white. This allows you to toggle the effect on and off. I'm going to leave it on for the moment. We'll get back to this later. Because by contrast, I want to show you what we can do down here. On track 2 here, on video track 2, you can see we've got this button. This button will be on every track. 
Well, this allows you to toggle the track output on or off. Effectively, it's a mute, a visible mute. It deactivates everything on this track. So be careful with this. If you've got multiple clips running along this track, maybe you've got 10 or 11 different clips. If you select this button, then what you are doing is making everything invisible on this track, all 10 or 11 clips. That might not be what you want. You might only want to make a couple of those clips invisible. Well, you would need to adjust the opacity for individual clips if that's the case. We'll get onto this in a moment. But as you can see, or rather you can't see, as I engage this and visibly mute whatever is on Video Track 2, we now see in our program monitor anything below it, in our case on Video Track 1, clip number 70. I'll toggle the visibility back on again, and of course now we see the black and white view there. Okay, now I am actually going to make it invisible for the moment, and that's only because I want to leave that black and white effect in place. But I want to actually work with some other filters, some other video effects, on the clip below on Video Track 1. So I want to be able to see what I'm doing, of course, within our program monitor. Now, I'm going to pause here for this tutorial, and I'm going to pick up again in the following tutorial, where we've just left off.